got our stone in for the fireplace. We've been waiting. I spent yesterday chipping and fitting all these pieces together to go on the hearth right here. We bought uh, what's called corner pieces. These are uh, made a little bit different here. They've got a corner on them. And I did that for the hearth purposes here where I'd have a ledge out on it here. I turned one in one direction, one in the other direction, all the way down through here. And then I fitted all the other pieces in uh, that goes with it there. Well, hello everybody, it's Danny back from Deep South Homestead over at the off-grid cabin. And uh, guys, we have had this stone right here behind us for probably a couple of months now. I just have had so many construction projects going on that I have not been able to get to it. Well, today, I went ahead and laid the hearth here behind me. Now, this is, uh, I, I've laid a lot of stone in my life. Over the years of doing construction work, over the past 30 years of my life, I've laid a good bit of stone in different places for different things. Now, today is not a how-to video, let me say that. But when you're laying stone, you lay it depending on the, uh, the, elements that you're going to be facing, I guess is what I I'm trying to say, the elements outside that you're facing will determine what you use to lay this stone with. Now, if you're outside and you're going to be in rain and sun and uh, a ground level, you know, water splatters up on it, different things like this, you're going to want to use a type S mortar because that's designed to lay stone outside. Now, inside, You've got several different options when you're laying it in where it's in a climate controlled area or like this off-grid cabin. It's not going to ever get rained on in here. Uh, it's not going to ever get real, real cold or real, real hot. You know, so there's not a lot of, uh, of contrast in the, in the heat and cold there. But there is some things I've done just in case. Now, inside you can use a type N mortar. Uh, or a type S, either one will work inside. Type N, I wouldn't recommend it for uh, where you're going to be in the elements at. Let me say that. I would only use type S if I was outside. Now, a lot of it has to do with the backing that you're laying the stone against. A lot of people lay it against stucco. If you lay it against stucco or plywood, you need to do like I have here on the walls. I have... Um, I have hardy backer on parts of it here, and then I had plywood on parts of it. With the plywood, I put a 30 pound felt down, and then I put the expanded metal on, and I put mine up with stainless steel screws. A lot of people use roofing tacks, but mortar will eventually eat the heads off of a roofing tack. And I just went ahead and put stainless steel screws and washers in mine everywhere so that I wouldn't have that issue in the future. Now there's a proper way to lay this, uh, the steel mesh. One way you run your hand up and it's smooth. The other way you run your hand down and it's real jagged and it grabs. You want that side out and you want to, when you pull your hand down it, you want the jagged part, you want to feel the jagged part. You don't want to feel the smooth part. You want to feel the smooth part when you run your hands up it. So, and you want to lap it about two inches whenever you put your seams together on all directions. That's just a, a recommendation now, I didn't lap mine a full two inches, but I used a lot more stainless steel screws and stuff like that in it. I mean, I've got several dollars worth of stainless steel screws and washers in this. But, and once you get the expanded metal on, uh, on the inside, I'm going to use a type N mortar, and I'm going to lay a bed of mortar over this expanded metal, and I'm going to take a trowel like you used to lay tile with, and I'm going to come back and I'm going to rake it across it and put grooves all in it. And then we're going to let that dry. And then we're going to lay our mortar to our stone and then put it on that for the walls. Now, the hearth was a little bit different down here. The hearth was a plywood hearth. I framed it up out of three quarter inch plywood, uh, exterior plywood. And I come back with 
a layer of half inch hardy backer screwed on to that. Now, in reality, because it has a wood structure behind it, it can move. It might be just minute, but it could move. And because of that, I decided not to use a type N or a type S mortar inside the cabin here. I decided to go with a modified thin set. Now, out in front of this fireplace here, it doesn't get that hot. Uh, now, if the, if the hearth was level with the base of the fireplace on the inside in here, I would have used a type S mortar, just simply because of the heat. But because the fireplace and the hearth are like six inches difference here between them, we've had fires going in here all day and all night, and I can reach up here and lay my hands on these stones, and they're just warm. They're not hot, because most of the heat's coming out rising up. So I went with a modified thin set because of my, I didn't use a regular thin set because a regular thin set I felt like might crack and might not hold because it's on plywood and hardy backer and, and, and it could possibly with the settling of the cabin things like that it could move. If you use a modified thin set it's flexible. It has the ability to flex without breaking. So that's what we've done to lay the stone on the hearth here is I've used a modified thin set to do that. Now when I lay the stone on the walls, I would just use a type N mortar because we're inside and I don't ever anticipate the wall actually moving uh, in, in any way that would affect the stonework. Now I've gone back to buildings I've laid 30 years ago using this same technique and, and it's still just as sound and intact as it was the day I laid it. The mortar is all still intact. Nothing has come loose. I mean, they're, they're still like in mint condition. Uh, and I know I'm probably going to get those out there that are professional masons that says, oh, you've got to do this or you've got to do that. Well, you know, I run a construction company for 26 years and I've seen stone layers lay stone a lot of different ways. I mean, I've done some of the most fancy places that there is and stone workers have done things that's unconventional as far as the rules go and they've told me we've done this for many 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 years and we've never had a fall with it and, and I've permitted them to do it and I've gone back and checked the work years later and, it's, and they were right you know things like the modified thin set on the hearth and all that doesn't seem to be an issue you know, with having a problem. I mean, they use it for laying tile on floors that has uh, wood underlayment and stuff like that because they know it's going to move. And I felt like it would probably still be the best thing to do with the stone here. Now, I love the natural look of the field stone. I'm not a dry, I've done dry stack stone. I've done a dry stack stone from my mom and dad's fireplace whenever I built theirs. I dry stacked all of it. I'm just not a dry stack stone person. I like the field, the field stone look. I particularly care for the, it's called an Arkansas blend. They don't call it that anymore, but for years and years and years, that's what it was called was an Arkansas blend. You have black stones in them, kind of like these and one over there. They're called spotter stones. You just kind of spot them around in the, uh, in, the, in the artwork of the stone and it really brings it out now. What I'll eventually do is once we have, we're going to go back with a charcoal mortar mix. Uh, I'm going to use regular in uh, mortar and I've got the charcoal in a, in a bottle. You know, one bottle mixes two 80 pound bags. I'll do the math, figure it out, and we'll do the whole hearth all at one time and go ahead and mix it up do all the grout work when we use a grout bag now I have the grout bags we'll put the grout much like a cake decorating bag but just a lot larger we'll put it in there and then we'll trial it all into all the grooves real good and then we'll broom it out and everything and once that's completely dried I'll probably come back with some type of a sealer now in the past I've used shellac and it has worked out fantastic because it leaves a little bit of a gloss on the stone and the stone just jumps out at you. But you know, I haven't been able to find shellac anymore. 
So I'm going to have to do some research and to see what I can put on it that, gives, that brings that gloss out in it because it makes the stone work. If you go to clean the stone, it makes it a lot easier to wipe off dust and uh, uh, smut or anything soot that happens to get on it from a fireplace or anything like that. It makes it a whole lot easier to clean that stuff off of there if you've got those stones sealed. Now I don't use just a conventional like the tile on the floor here has a sealer on it and the grout work in it has a sealer. I don't particularly use that on the uh, stone because stone are so porous. This is a porcelain stone on uh, tile on the floor. Uh, the stone work is very porous and I like to make th like maybe three applications of a good clear coat sealer on it that um, can withstand the heat without any kind of problems. Now the shellac has never given me any problem. Uh, I got to do some, like I said, some research to figure out what has taken the place of shellac. I don't want to use anything like varnish or because it just yellows over the years and it will eventually peel and flake off. So we're going to try to figure out what's the best thing to put on this because I like when I walk into a room I like the stonework to just pop out at me, and I like for it to have a gloss look to it. I don't like a dry uh, satin color, you know, like a, a just a just a, a a dry look. I don't like that because it it just doesn't appeal to me as far as the looks of it. I prefer to have the dark, vivid colors and see the color of each individual stone. Now, in the video here you can see some difference in coloration as I mixed them up as I was going through this and tried to um, lay them out but you really can't tell the difference in the colors of the stone because there's like five different color stones here and it's very difficult to pick them all out unless you put some sort of a sealer on them that allows them to just jump out and pop and that's probably what we'll be doing uh, this one that wanted this done before Christmas holidays. She wanted it done for the Thanksgiving holidays, but like I said, I've had so many projects going on that I haven't been able to get to it. And I kept telling her, I says, well, one of these days when it rains and I can't get outside and work, I'll just come inside and we'll do this. Well, that was four weeks ago and it hasn't rained. And the little bit of rain that we did get was during the night hours. So I've been able to continue to work outside and I eventually just had to take one pretty day and it is beautiful today. I mean, the temperature outside is like 73 degrees, perfectly blue skies, light breeze blowing, just absolute perfect day to be working outside. And I went ahead and said, you know what? I'm going to start this because if I don't start it, I'll never get it done. So we've got the hearth laid now. Um, I'm going to let it dry for 24 hours and then I'll come back. And we will uh, we'll go ahead and I'm going to completely grout this hearth all the way through. Get it all grouted at one time. Because when I mix the charcoal um, blend up that goes inside the mortar, I'll mix it up based on a formula. And I want to do all the hearth at one time. I don't want to do part of it and then mix another batch and do part of it. Because then you can get your colorations off when you're actually hand mixing your uh, pigments into your mortar. Now, coming from the heart to the wall, if I happen to be just a little bit of a difference in the shade, you'll probably never know it. But I'll write down a formula as I do it so that I make sure I get the entire batch for the heart, one color, and we'll use that same formula when we lay the walls. Now, I don't know when the next video will come up about the walls because it's, uh, I've got a you know, I've got a bad back and a bad neck and bad knees and rotator cups torn off. And this took its toll on me today being on my knees on the floor all day because I've got one knee that's blown out and just about messed up. So I'm probably going to grout it tomorrow. And then I don't know how many days it'll take me to recover from this before I can actually begin to lift those heavy bags and, you know, mix and mortar and stuff like that again to actually put the base on the wall because I'll have to put the base on the wall and let it dry for 24 hours before I can actually come back. And I may even do 36 hours on the wall to make sure that my mortar base has a real good back to cure, you know, cured so that I can, it's not having any dampness in it or anything like that so that it will, you know, adhere the, to the stone real well. 
So guys, I just, um, you know, I wanted to show you all this over here at the off-grid cabin. We don't do a lot of videos about the cabin too much anymore um, because I have so much going on and when I do do something for the cabin, it's not anything real large at any one given point. And sometimes over here, I'm just working at, on doing partial things and I go do something else and I come back and do a partial thing. And it's very difficult to make a full video about something because I'm in and out so much. But now that I'm starting on this, I thought it would be proper to maybe do a video. And we're going to show some pictures in the video of what I was doing, how I was doing it. And uh, maybe you, uh, Ms. Wanda did take a few pictures and maybe some video footage and stuff. And you can look at that and see the progress and how we went about actually um, getting this to come to fruition. So guys, thank you for subbing to us and thank you for watching our journey here at Deep South Homestead. Uh, we're actually creating a off-grid homestead on our large homestead because we feel like in the near future that there could be some power outages and some different things that could start happening. Um, some shortage of food supplies and things like this, maybe not being able to get the right amount of fuel to do what we need to do with and stuff. Uh, may not be able to, you know, have electricity and things. And this off-grid cabin that we've built here is designed with all of that in mind. So that if something should happen, Wanda and I can quickly come here and be able to function like we always do. And it's a whole homestead here. There's a cabin, there's a building outside, there's other, other smoke houses out here. You know, we have the hog pen right here beside us. We have a high tunnel right here beside us. We have uh, lots of other projects that I'm working on right here on this off-grid homestead to make it completely functionable. We're spending a lot of time over here so that uh, we can figure out now while we have electricity at the other place and we're able to purchase things because the supply chain is quickly breaking down. I'll give you for instance, I was at the hardware store the other day and a man come in, he was trying to build a house and he wanted to order some windows. He said, I, I've had them ordered through Lowe's. He said, it's been 26 weeks and now they're telling me it's going to be another 24 weeks. Uh, can y'all get them any faster in the hardware store or the building supply store where I was at? The guy told him, said, we've been getting them in pretty regular. He said, but there's a, there's a 22 week waiting period on windows. And the guy said, well, I've already waited 26 and they're telling me it's going to be another 25 more. He said, I don't even trust them anymore. 24, 25 more. He said, I don't even trust them. He said, so I'm going to give y'all a shot. If you can get my window, and he gave him the list of the windows that he needed. And uh, when he left out, I asked the guy, I said, man, is it that bad? And he said, Danny, it's, it's, it's really bad. He said, now some lumber is available with no problem. He said, like spruce pine, white pine. He said, we're not having any problems getting it. Uh, treated lumber, we're not having any problems getting treated lumber. Because uh, I was needing some six by sixes for some projects that I was doing. Uh, treated six by sixes and they seem to have all of them the, the four by sixes they seem to have that kind of stuff and the two by eights and two by sixes and stuff they had that you know he told me he said there's just some things right now like that's getting really expensive like metal he said if you need a metal roof he said right now it's going to cost the heck out of you so there are they are beginning to have problems another thing was the uh he mentioned to me was latex paint he said there's a big shortage on latex paint we're having problems even getting it and i had just talking to another a hardwood a hardware store and they had told me the exact th same thing because i was trying to get some latex paint there uh, to paint one of the projects here with and i couldn't get all that i needed and they told me said they called the warehouse and the warehouse only had two more gallons in the warehouse he told me he said i'm telling you it's getting hard to get latex paint here and so there's things that's beginning to happen 
And this is why I'm busting it so hard, uh, trying to get things done before the end of this year, is just simply because of the broken, uh, I don't know if you want to call it a broken supply chain. Some, some people will say it's by design. I, I believe it really is by design. But it, the design has messed up the supply chain. So because we're not able to get stuff, I'm just busting it trying to get what I can get done before 2022 actually rolls around because from what I'm hearing, 2022 is going to be a rough year for being able to get a lot of different materials. And that's one reason we're trying to buy up everything. We may not be putting it in the cabin just yet, but we're purchasing it if we can and trying to get it here. We're on a waiting list on a lot of things. Uh, our, our generator that we got to run the cabin off of or our large house, um, it took like six weeks to get it. You know, I mean, we've had to replace re refrigerators and uh, washing machines and stoves. And we're talking about months to get them replaced at the big house over here. And guys, that's something used to, you could just go to town and, and you could just purchase a stove or a refrigerator. And you can't do that anymore. And if you do go and they have something, you're limited in what you can purchase. And most of it's cheap junk. So, uh, one of these chairs, for another, for instance, I had bought the big recliner here, uh, the camouflage one, and Wanda, well, I told her, I said, you need to get you one, and she's like, no, I don't want one, but after she slept in mine one night, she said, oh my gosh, I want one of these. So, we ordered her one in March, and we just got it here about a month ago. That's how far out recliners and furniture and stuff like that is. So, that's why we're doing what we're doing because I don't see things getting any better. And that's one reason why I'm actively trying to get this done because the bottom line is this. If the stone on the fireplace holds heat, then what that does is it radiates warmth back into the cabin. Now, whatever temperature we get this cabin at on the inside, it usually keeps it that temperature because it's rare. it's been soundproofed and everything. Um, and we're trying to get it. I'm still using the grating right here. I finally got the, uh, the, the blower system over here burn off the other day outside. I didn't want to do it inside because it said of all the, the gases and stuff and the oils and stuff that's in those pipes, you know. Uh, said not to do it inside, so I finally got it burn off outside. We're going to be trying to get that in the fireplace uh, with the blower system in it in order to be able to heat the cabin more efficiently. In other words, this will make the off-grid cabin with its small little cage blower. It's a little box about yay big. Got a little tiny, tiny little motor in it that just blows some warm air through this thing or blows air through it. And as it passes through these tubes and comes out the tops of them, it heats the cabin on half the wood that you would normally burn in a fireplace and it makes it like central heating in the off-grid cabin. Because I can sit one of my little power stations over here and I can run that little old blower motor. It ain't much bigger than a computer motor for, for just days on end if I need to before I have to recharge my little uh, uh, power stations. So these are the kind of things we're doing in order to be able to function should something happen. We're training ourselves now by coming over here at the off-grid cabin, living over here as much as we can to see where our holes are at in our system so that we can correct it now before something happens. So guys, uh, I hope that laying the stone on the fireplace will be interesting to you. Hang around, watch what goes on, the clips that Ms. Wanda took, and we sure appreciate you staying with us and watching us. So thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.